The 2019 Air Force Reserve Conference USA Basketball Championships presented by Baylor Scott & White Sports Performance Center at the Star. From the Ford Center in Frisco, Texas, it's the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee, the 12th seed against the fifth seeded Blazers of UAB. First round action of the Conference USA Championships. The winner of this one will move on to the quarterfinals to meet the fourth seed, UTSA. Ten teams with winning records in this tournament. George Dunham along with Hank Dickinson. And Hank, there's probably a half dozen teams that feel like we have a chance to do this over the next few days. Absolutely, and the two teams that play right in front of us tonight have championship pedigree. So count in Middle Tennessee, despite a, a rocky start, they've righted the ship and UAB always solid. A young Blue Raiders team that is led by the newcomer of the year in Conference USA, and what a season Antonio Green has had. He certainly got the green light, 104 trays on the season, but he's really a guy that scores at all three levels, George. Excellent at the free throw line, and as the newcomer of the year, he's gotten better defensively as the season has progressed. 18 wins for UAB, and they uh, have a lot of different uh, dynamic things about their team, including a nasty guy inside. A bully on the block, Lewis Sullivan. He is a southpaw, and he is crafty inside, but also just a tough man who's ready to compete. It's going to be an interesting tournament. It's going to be an interesting first-round matchup here between the Blazers and the Blue Raiders. George Dunham, Hank Dickinson, we're courtside. So is John Little. Thanks so much, George. And new Middle Tennessee head coach Nick McDevitt, he inherited a depleted roster and a really tough non-conference schedule. 13 straight losses in the middle of this season for Middle Tennessee. But look at what they've done over the last 14 games, eight wins, and they won three of four coming into the conference tournament. If there's any 12 seed that has an opportunity to make a big time run, I think it might be the Blue Raiders better at the end of the season they have won six straight against UAB the fifth seed coached by Robert Eason in his third year starting lineups and the opening tip coming up on ESPN plus don't underestimate me don't count me out don't limit my potential don't block my runway we are Middle Tennessee State University. I exceed expectations. I work harder than the rest. I set the tone. I still serve with honor. I go the distance. I am true blue. The Scribblers. Sketchers. Doodlers. Powered by Midnight Oil. Under moonlight, they tinker. Toil. Stop. Go. Then nothing. Then Eureka. Everything. So who will create a better smartphone? Who will make the game safer? Who will develop an unheard of treatment for a rare disease? And then 200 more? UAB. Powered by Will. Adventure with the Air Force Reserve. First round action, Conference USA Championships, UAB in Middle Tennessee. Let's take a look at our starting lineups for the Blue Raiders, who come in playing uh, very well of late, winning three out of four, six of their last ten, a three-guard lineup. We talked about Antonio Green, also joined by Jace Johnson and Donovan Sims in the backcourt, a very young Middle Tennessee team that has been getting better as the season has gone along. And for UAB, a change. We don't see Zach Bryant, the outstanding sophomore, their leading scorer, third team all-conference. 
Uh, Jeremiah Bell taking his place in the starting lineup. We'll keep an eye on that. I think we'll see Zach Bryant for sure today in the last meeting against uh, Middle Tennessee, 21.6 rebounds, but no start. Tap controlled by Middle Tennessee wearing the black uniforms, and uh, they swept UAB in the regular season. That home and home that went back to back in late January and early February. Sims looking in from the left wing. Dribbles around the double team, tries a three and knocks it down, and a good start for Middle Tennessee. Well, Sims is a guy that likes to spin down low, and you can't give him angles. That time he shows he's got the perimeter depth. McCoy with the handle up top for UAB. That's Jalen Perry, senior from Louisville, going cross court to Bell. Now the entry pass. Gay inside, little foot won't go, and it's tapped outside, and UAB will reset. McCoy, a junior out of Indianapolis, gives way to Bell on the weave. Perry now looking in, off the screen. He'll try a three, and that one is good. Is his foot on the line? We're going to say a three-pointer. Still checking that. Very, very close, and the Blue Raiders doing a good job extending the defense. And yes, that's just, uh, they're going to give that a three. It is a three, and both teams knocking it down from the outside here in the early going. With the handle, Sims made the three a moment ago for Middle Tennessee. He'll try another one from the right wing, and that one splashes down. Donovan Sims with two three-pointers to get the Blue Raiders off to a good start. Only an 11-win team, but they won six of their last 10 games. Sims knows about hitting clutch threes. He did it to beat UAB earlier this year. Bell with a look inside, and Gay trying to pivot slipped, but able to regain it with his dribble. And there's 12 on the shot clock as Bell drives inside with a left-hand flip, goes in off the glass. Finally saw a seam and took advantage of it down the left side of the lane. Everything had been downtown shooting to that point in the game. 6-5, Middle Tennessee. Just a couple of minutes into it here from Frisco, Texas, the headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys. Two basketball courts and a football stadium. And that's your practice facility. And there is a foul on the UAB away from the ball. Good look at Nick McDevitt doing a great job, as John Little told you, riding the ship after that 13-game losing streak. He got his team to focus, and you could argue with the bonus play, when you take three out of four, well, that resets your mindset about what can we do in March. James Hawthorne checking in for Reggie Scurry. There the substitution for Middle Tennessee. Another three up and no good. There with a big rebound inside is Carl Gamble, the senior out of Columbia, South Carolina, only senior in their starting lineup. That was a nice follow to keep Middle Tennessee with the lead, now up by three. And the paint, left-handed flip up and good. And there is Sullivan, who we talked about in our pregame, averaging 12 points per game, strong post move there. Skilled southpaw, that's an old school move. Still pretty to watch when it works. Antonio Green doubled, had to give up the ball, now inside. Shot won't go for Hawthorne. And UAB running the other way as Anderson McCoy will bring him down. McCoy has started the last four, kind of a bit player, but a senior getting a, a chance to be on the floor at the beginning of these important games. Perry able to penetrate a little runner up and good. Jalen Perry, senior out of Louisville, Kentucky, with his first bucket of the game. And 9-8, the first lead of the game for UAB. Jace Johnson with the weave, throws it down low to Gamble. Couldn't uh, put up a shot, it throws a wild one out. And uh, there we get a stoppage in play. Robert Eason uh, likes that segment of defense there for his Blazers. Guy that's been around the program at UAB for a long time in his uh, third season at the helm, but he was a part of that Jared Haslett team that won the 2015 championship and of course had the huge upset of Iowa State in the NCAA tournament. Boy, between these two teams over the last decade, they've had some quality NCAA wins. Middle Tennessee uh, with wins over Minnesota and Michigan State. Then uh, really good representatives for Conference USA. Gay on the dribble, switching hands, and will give up the ball. Shot clock is down to seven. As Perry handles up high on the left side and there is Bryant for the first time tonight handling the ball inside again shot wouldn't go and the board brought down by Reggie Scurry they didn't follow his own shot that time he could have been in the rebound area with an offensive stick back 
from the top. A wild three may have been uh, partially blocked there by Bell. And UAB with a couple of good uh, defensive stages there. And now there is a foul call on the uh, left side. And that'll take us to a timeout. 9-8 UAB with the early lead over Middle Tennessee on ESPN+. Plus. about four minutes into it here. First round action from Conference USA Championships. This is how the regular season ended. What a year for Jeff Jones and Old Dominion. They come in as the top seed and the team to beat this week in Frisco. And Jeff Jones gets the Coach of the Year honors. His top player, B.J. Stiff, Player of the Year. So certainly the cream rising to the top there. But as we mentioned in the onset, and this is said all around the nation this time of year, it is a wide open tournament. UTSA, again, a team that uh, has got the great uh, duo of Javon Jackson and Keaton Wallace. They know they can make some noise. And these two teams that we're watching tonight off the hot shooting starts to get out of the gate. First three pointers of the, uh, the night, two three pointers went down for Middle Tennessee. Donovan Sims with those trays, and that got. The Blue Raiders off to a good start. 9-8 lead here for UAB. 14-46 to play in the first half. Perry in the left corner. They'll reverse it to Lovin on the right side. Now they'll try to work it into Pearson. His shot is blocked. Right back to him. And the loose ball out. And last touched by Hawthorne of Middle Tennessee. Nice uh, block work here. Scurry stays right with him. And even though Pearson is a big body, he can't clear that. Inbounds pass in trouble as Bryant able to scoop it out in a three-pointer from the right wing by Jalen Perry. Second bucket for him, his first three-pointer of the game. And UAB extends their lead to four. He saved by Bryant to keep that play alive. Ends up in three more points. Antonio Green went a little silent here in the early going. They get it over to Sims. Out of Scurry at the top. A little zone look here from UAB. Touch pass by Green inside, trying to post up Scurry. Couldn't get the shot, but he got a, a whistle, and he'll go to the line. Maktar Gay trying to make it tough on him down low, as well as Pearson. And Gay's going to pick up the foul, but uh, you see with that zone in there, there's two ways to beat it. Shoot your way out of the zone or attack it. And Middle Tennessee tried to go on the attack with Scurry. A 67% free throw shooter. Junior out of Augusta, Georgia. And the first one is short. Remains a four-point lead for UAB as we get some substitutions here for the Blue Raiders. Scurry has now been to the free throw line 118 times on the season. So the most trips for the Blue Raiders, he and Jace Johnson both make a lot of trips, but neither one are anywhere near automatic at the free throw line. It's had a nice year, averaging 12 and 6. And the second one goes for Scurry. Blue Raiders within three. 
UAB, the only team that has played in all 24 Conference USA championships, and they've had a lot of success through the years. Both of these programs have. A little uh, zone trap here by Middle Tennessee, and UAB able to pass around it, loving with it, reversing it right to Bryant with a jab step, trying to penetrate. And here he goes, that beautiful move inside. Zach Bryant showing you why he led UAB in scoring this year. He's a terrific player. One on five, basically, because by the time they got into an offensive set, shot clock was down to 10, and now we got a collision. Sims stumbles after catching Bryant, got him with the foot. Uh, just moments ago, though, this was the move by Zach Bryant. Nine on the shot clock. He takes matters into his own hands, and even though he didn't get the start, the leading score for the Blazers is still a huge part of what they need to be able to get in the win column. Five-point lead for UAB as Middle Tennessee tries to shoot into it. Sims already with a couple of three-pointers here tonight to Green. Down on the baseline to Scurry. Back to Sims, trying to penetrate, pull up, jumper good. And boy, Sims is shooting the ball really well. We get a foul away from the ball. And I believe the basket will count. It will. Let's see who we got here. There's Sims with continued hot hands. He's hit a couple of threes. Here he creates off the dribble and hits the soft jumper that time, but showing his range. And yes, the collision that occurred does not wipe off the shot. And it gives Middle Tennessee uh, the ball here. So they get a big break, a bucket, and then a foul on UAB. Ray Natilli and crew going to walk across take another look at it to make sure. Are we checking that uh, we didn't get too rough here? Maybe, Maybe we didn't get a, an elbow or something thrown. If the elbow is thrown, then it can change the uh, situation dramatically. And so they're always going to go back and make sure. But yes, you talk about these two teams and their pedigree in Conference USA. UAB has been there a long time. Middle Tennessee of late has been a power. Let's look at a lower right corner. Yeah, there is uh, Joe Pearson, and uh, boy, that's that's tough. It's a very physical block out, and it looked like he may have gotten him with the elbow. So they take a look at that, and our officiating crew, Natalia, our lead official, Jeff Hardness, and Brett Smith. Uh, that'll be interesting. Three gentlemen, flagrant. Three gentlemen that are very. Uh, commonly seen throughout the Conference USA ranks. And they're having a good look at it right now. It's been a physical day here at the Ford Center. I understand you hit a window. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I tell you what, uh, Mr. Jones makes sure the windows and the doors are so clean, I walked clean into one today, thinking I was going outside to enjoy the windy day. They've got such a great setup here at the Star. And if you bring the kids down for any portion of this uh, Tournament. They got plenty of room to run around on the football field outside. It's football and basketball all at once here in Frisco. If you haven't been, you ought to make plans next year. In fact, uh, Conference USA announcing that it will be back here at the start of the next couple of years. And it's really interesting. This is a football stadium. If the weather is bad outside, this is where the Cowboys practice. They have high school games here, football games, and two courts right next to each other. The setup is incredible. And again, just a, another credit to Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys for a vision of something like this in the area that surrounds the Ford Center with restaurants and bars and retail stores. It's, uh, it's something else. Well, that's what the out-of-towners found out last year. I know just from talking to folks from uh, around the conference, year number one, the question mark was Frisco, Texas and a football stadium. But coming out of year one, it was, wow, Frisco, Texas is something else, and the football stadium is really cool. So this has been a major undertaking for Conference USA. And I believe it's been a major undertaking for Ray Natilly here. Looks like it's it going to be a flagrant one. Flagrant one they're going to call on the Tamil Pearson, a freshman from Chicago. So this is a big break, a big possession here for Middle Tennessee. They get the jumper by Sims, and now they will have a free throws for Reggie Scurry. Already one of two at the line. Is the recipient of that elbow that didn't feel very good on the noggin. Middle Tennessee has a chance to take the lead here after the free throws. They get possession as well. Scurry with one more. And he doesn't deliver. A two for four. 
to start the game, but Middle Tennessee will get possession of the ball and a chance to uh, take the lead with a three-pointer. The Blue Raiders, winners three of their last four games. They're the 12th seed, but they have played, as we mentioned, a lot better here late in the season. And as they play head-to-head -head here with the fifth seed, only down by two here in the early going. Trying to get Antonio Green going in a turnover. Here's UAB with numbers running the other way. Bryant off the window. Yes, and UAB makes the Blue Raiders pay for a turnover. Active 2-3 zone and Bryant with another nice finish. He's gone right and finished. He's gone left both times high off the window. Up high Hawthorne over to Green. We're going to try to get him inside. He can't penetrate off the Johnson. And he can't uh, get into the lane either. The Sims throws it back on the left side. Johnson took a step, an extra one, and a traveling call on the freshman from Buffalo, New York. Here's the steal for UAB to get it going. Boy, a head stretcher, though, that Green cannot get on track. They just can't find him. He's not getting many touches, and Antonio Green has not been a factor in the early going for Middle Tennessee. 16-12, the UAB lead. Down to the 13-minute uh, mark here at the Ford Center in Frisco. Round number one, Conference USA. Bryant inside, drawing all sorts of contact. Three Blue Raiders around him. And we'll see who we get the whistle on. Farquhar was the first one to make contact on a reach as he went in the lane. And then he got uh, hit by Hawthorne. Farquhar was really trailing him, and we've seen Bryant now attack from both sides, and this time take it right down the gut to earn a trip to the free throw line. 71% free throw shooter, leading score for UAB this season. Did not start tonight, came off the bench, and this is his first free throw. Outstanding sophomore from Hastings, Florida, 13 all conference, Conference USA. There's a bright future ahead of him. Or he had some big scoring days, including a 30-point performance at Rice. Bryant makes the second, and don't you think UAB feels pretty good about things? 18 wins, and they took down Old Dominion at the end of the regular season. Well, they're an interesting team. They uh, they had wins in Bowling Green, Huntington, and Hattiesburg in three consecutive games. That's not easy to do on the road to win at those places consecutively. A program that's been around for 40 years, UAB, 15 NCAA appearances. Middle Tennessee, not too shabby themselves with nine NCAA tournament appearances. Touch pass inside. Hawthorne blocked from behind. And there's some more of that Blazer defense. And uh, Bryant will try to take advantage of it. That block was by Pearson. And a good one at that. Textbook redirects already in this game. And there's another on a deflection. Scurry with a block. And the left-hander won't go. Initially for Green, he's having a tough time. But the putback. Up and in by Jace Johnson. Excellent follow for a guy that's a straight line driver when he has the ball. Johnson, the freshman from Buffalo, in the right place on the follow. That's the UAB lead to three. So we're at the 12-minute mark here. Bryant, little stutter step, moving left. Trying to get some space off the bell. And Bell will spin inside the lane. Turn around, no. There for the follow, though, and the putback is Sullivan, who has been as advertised. Tough in the paint. Five or more boards in 10 in a row for Sullivan. Green a three from the right, it's no good. And Sullivan with another board for UAB. Bryant bringing him up. With both hands and able to deliver to Sullivan inside. Ball batted around. And uh, Middle Tennessee digging it out. Donovan Sims bringing it up to the left wing. Off to Johnson, curling to the right of the lane. Ball knocked out of his hands by Lovin. And that will still belong to uh, Middle Tennessee as we go to timeout. Five-point lead for UAB over Middle Tennessee. First round action, championship week here on ESPN+. Plus.
George Dunham, Hank Dickinson from the Ford Center in Frisco, UAB with the early five point lead here in first round action. Let's go courtside. John Little. You guys were talking about how excited Conference USA is to have the Ford Center at the Star hosting the Conference USA tournament over four total years and talking to people in the conference there's no doubt that the partnership between the conference and the Dallas Cowboys is a big deal but also lost in all this some feel is how successful it was last year with the student athletes the students absolutely loved it having both tournaments there together being able to watch their co-competitors and step out and watch the other games, and also the coaches being able to watch the games as well. It's the student athletes first here in Conference USA, and they're very excited to have something that the kids are excited about. And so, a college athlete playing in the headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys, Bryant's jumper no good after UAB forced another Middle Tennessee turnover. Still a five-point lead here for the Blazers, the number five seed and the Conference USA Championships. Entry pass too wide and beyond the reach of Reggie Scurry. Excellent job by Maktar Gay, the 6'10 sophomore, to use his length to his advantage there and kind of seal off the opportunity for the Blue Raiders to get to that ball in the low post. There's two courts here together in the Ford Center. John mentioned we had women's action earlier today. North Texas, Old Dominion, Charlotte, and Utah were winners and action earlier tonight. The men take over this evening, and the winner of this game will move on to the quarterfinals. Kickball and a reset for the Blazers. Florida Atlantic with the lead in the game that's going on just to our left. You can sometimes hear the double horns, and there you see a three-pointer knocked down by Jeremiah Bell. Both teams have tried to step up the trapping defense on the perimeter, but both teams shooting the ball well from downtown. Biggest lead of the game for UAB, 22-14. We wind down to the 10-minute mark here of the first half. Beautiful entry pass and a knockdown inside by Carl Gamble, his second basket of the game. And Middle Tennessee trying to hang in there down six. Well, you nailed it. That's just excellent delivery of a ball over the top of the defense to get it down for an easy look. Bryant off the screen. Back to Bell for a three-pointer. And that's off the back of the rim and rebounded by Middle Tennessee. They've been pretty active on the board. There's Reggie Scurry with another rebound. Johnson to flip over to Sims. He's been a hot shooter here for Middle Tennessee. Cross court over to Johnson. Now Antonio Green still looking for his first basket of the game. He averages 18 points per game, but so far UAB has been very tough on him. Sims can't find the range on the three. And Tyreek Scott Grayson brings it down for UAB. Over to Bryan now along the baseline, a whistle as Bell lays it in. And we're gonna have a foul on Middle Tennessee. Bell had gotten a step that time, and so trying to take away the baseline results in a reach in. Well, Gamble with the foul for the Blue Raiders. And an imbalance here for UAB underneath their bucket, trying to add to a six-point lead. They've had at least three players in double figures in 27 other contests this year. A very balanced team. Bryant, entry pass down to Gay. And a lifty move, but he couldn't get it to go with the scoop. Now he's double teamed, has it ripped out of his hands by Hawthorne. And we get a jump, and possession stays with UAB. Quick hands, and uh, the defense not allowing any duck ends to be effective. But when you get the ball directly underneath the basket, that becomes as big a defender as the guys around you. Okay, handling again now off to Bryant. The pie to Bell, who's made a couple of nice shots from the top. Sullivan driving inside. No, batted off the uh, backboard right into the hands of Scott Grayson counted with the foul. Hung in the air despite Hawthorne being all over him and just being tenacious on the glass. That earns you a trip and an and one opportunity. And for Hawthorne, that is his second. He will come out of the game. Good board work there by UAB to keep it alive. Got Grayson in the right spot. Sophomore out of Brick, New Jersey. Try to make a three-point play and does. Brick, New Jersey, not a good place to be from if you're a basketball you're a player. Shooter, that's no, going to come up too much. No. Nine-point lead for UAB. Middle Tennessee 
Trying to get their star player going. Antonio Green still has not scored from the high post. Carl Gamble will. And he's the second leading scorer for the Blue Raiders here in the first half. Not an easy shot that he just hit right there. And you're right, you know, in terms of Antonio Green, he's not even getting touches, let alone looks. Got a kick. Foot extending from Carl Gamble. And UAB will inbound. It is championship week. And you and I appreciate this week. It is fun. We've had a lot of fun through the years going to conference tournaments. And uh, know a lot of fans around Conference USA made plans to be here in Frisco. You win out, you go to the NCAA tournament. Bryant trying to get inside, can't. Shot clock is down to six. Now moving off the screen. Little fade away from the baseline is no good. And here comes Antonio Green on the run. See if we'll take it. The distance has it knocked out of his hands from behind. And back off of Green. A frustrating start for the Blue Raiders leading score. Total credit goes to Zach Bryant. He missed a rather wild shot, but defensively he got back and was right behind Antonio Green and got that reach in just at the perfect time to knock it off of Green and give the ball back to the Blazers. 25-18 UAB. Just under the eight-minute mark here of the first half. The Fort Center in Frisco. First round, Conference USA Championships. Sullivan, nice pivot inside, scores with the left and draws the foul. Terrific move by Lewis Sullivan. And he has a chance for a three-point play after the timeout. Blazers heating up here in the first half. Championship week. First round action, Conference USA Championships. George Dunham along with Hank Dickinson, the Ford Center in Frisco, the headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys. Let's check in with John Little. Well, with UAB in control, Middle Tennessee right now is saying, thank goodness that they, in this game, have Donovan Sims back. Antonio Green has not been able to hit a shot as of yet, but Sims has missed the last three games coming in, but he had been so red hot in the previous seven before that, averaging 17 points a game. Middle Tennessee really happy to have him back in line up, the lineup, especially with Green struggling. Green is having a tough time. They are uh, denying him the ball and not allowing him to drive inside. And even when he had a chance to drive the length of the court, they had three Blazers around him and have uh, made it difficult on the Blue Raiders leading score. UAB with the seven point lead and the inbounds. UAB has been owning points in the paint 14 to 8, and their bench has scored eight points. Middle Tennessee's reserves have yet to contribute on the scoreboard. Ellen Perry playing catch with it. Middle Tennessee packing in a 2 3 zone. Bell able to penetrate, but he lost the ball. Knocked out, last touch by a Blue Raider. Hot potato that time, and Middle Tennessee couldn't take advantage of it, even though their zone defense was creating some problems. With just four ticks left here, it's got to work quick. Way up top to Sullivan, he's able to regain it. And now the shot clock's down to one. 
And that is a shot clock violation. Jalen Perry couldn't quite get the shot away. Well, I think the, the culprit there was Sullivan. He gets the carom way up high, but then takes the extra dribble. And by the time he gets the ball out to the wing, you're down to one second, and that shot clock has evaporated. Seven-point lead for UAB. Middle Tennessee trying to shoot into it. There's Antonio Green trying to get something going. You can see two Blazers on. Now he has some space, tries the three-pointer. And it won't go, and UAB able to get the long rebound as Jalen Perry scoops it up. 0 of 5 from the floor, 0 of 4 from downtown for the junior from Tupelo, Mississippi. Not the start anyone anticipated. Scott Grayson weaving with Perry. He'll try the two-pointer foot on the line. And a nice jumper there for Jalen Perry now with seven points for the Blazers. Perry and Sullivan, the two seniors, playing like it matters in March to them. Off the screen, Green trying to get some space, runs into a double team again. Kicks it up high, three-pointer down from the top. And uh, Carl Gamble with it there, now the leading scorer in the game for the Blue Raiders. Checked his footwork right before he released and got that off in plenty of time. To a six-point lead for UAB. Perry, double team, lost it. And uh, as Green tried to get on his horse, he went to the floor. Now it's regained by Johnson. A three from the right wing is no good, but the tip is up and in. There is Reggie Scurry with some nice board work for Middle Tennessee. Excellent. The physical four man getting right in there and in a good position for the offensive rebound. Stick back all in one motion. They played a tough non-conference schedule to start this season under first-year head coach Nick McDevitt, but uh, we made note of it earlier in the game, Hank. This Blue Raiders team has played much better here the last 10 games. Well, it's a team that has that proud history. Kermit Davis had such a terrific run as the head coach, all-time winningest coach in Murfreesboro, and Middle Tennessee has the best win percentage in Conference USA Championship history, so even though they're rebuilding, they've got that. And here you see that long jumper from the top by Gamble. And again, you talk about seniors this time of year. They know that the sands in the hourglass are ticking away on them. And uh, you come to these conference tournaments, part of the magic of March is the fact that everyone's playing with some desperation. Donovan Sims now in double figures. The big stories here early for the Blue Raiders. Keep it a minute. Down by four. Now they extend some half-court pressure defense. UAB trying to find some spaces in it. Zach Bryant. Off the bench tonight, did not start for the Blazers. Third team all-conference player, three-pointer short, and Sims with a board for Middle Tennessee. Chance to make it a one-score game here if they can uh, find a basket on this possession. Sims gives it up. See if they try to get Antonio Green going here. Has not made a shot yet. Sims will dump it to Green. Uh, down low to uh, Gamble, and he'll kick it back out, almost an over and back. Shot clock is down to three, a long walk by Sims off the glass, and he is feeling it here in this first half. It's a one-point game. That's his third three-pointer, but that was one that had to come late in the shot clock, and he used a little bit of window. Nice find underneath as Gay lays it in. Zach Bryant with a beautiful pass. Well, when you've got a long, wiry forward like Maktar Gay, that's how you get the ball to him in transition. And uh, Blazers recovering after that long, banked in three. 29, 26, UAB with the lead. Sims going to try another three short. And there is Gay for the rebound. Had to uh, pivot and show his back to Sims. He tried to steal it away. Perry now with the hold, waiting for the screen. The team's uh, very active defensively here in this first half. Brian, a little show and go. Back to Gay. He'll try a three-pointer. Too hard. And the board to Middle Tennessee. And a push by Lewis Sullivan. Get a chance, the, uh, yeah, get a chance to look at what Sims uh, can do from downtown. His first two threes conventional. This one, the panic three. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're almost out of time here. And it Devin, counts. Yeah, McDevitt got to be happy with the play of Donovan Sims, a sophomore and a hometown guy from right there in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, home of the Blue Raiders. Donovan Sims bringing it up for Middle Tennessee. Four minute mark, and it's a three point game. 
Blue Raiders showing that uh, improvement here in the first round of the Conference USA Championships. And there's Antonio Green getting his first shot to go down. It's a three-pointer, and we are tied. Let's see if that breaks the seal for him after a rugged start. 0 of 4 from downtown. He comes off the screen, has a wide-open look, and cashes in. The newcomer of the year in Conference USA has his first bucket. Here's Bryant driving inside. Lost the handle, drew the foul. Excellent take, left to right through the lane. Knew he was going to get some contact and welcomed it. Yeah, but that's on Hawthorne. That is his third. And uh, this may get him going. Antonio Green, his first three, tied between UAB and Middle Tennessee. Nine-point lead for UAB has disappeared. 3.38 left here in the first half. First round action. Conference USA Championships here in Frisco, Texas. The Ford Center headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys. George Dunham along with Hank Dickinson. John Little with his courtside. And this feisty Blue Raiders team has uh, scrapped their way right back into it. Well, they've been dominated in almost every statistical hustle category, but they're still shooting 5 of 12 from downtown. So that three ball keeping them very much alive and Green hitting one a moment ago. Bryant at the free throw line, though, is since coming off the bench, been the heartbeat of this Blazer team, always looking to score. Bryant uh, off the bench this evening now with six points. Two Blue Raiders leading the way with Sims and Gamble off the great starts with 11 points here in the first half. Second one go for Bryant. It's a one-point UAB lead. Grace Johnson, a freshman out of Buffalo, New York, bringing it up for the Blue Raiders. Johnson holding. Entry pass. Now a beautiful dish to a flying Carl Gamble, and boy, what a first half he's having. Yeah, that's a senior who's normally known as a rim protector and a shot blocker, but he's above his seasonal average of seven points. He has been something else, and the high post passing to him has also been superlative. 13 of the game for Gamble, one point lead for Middle Tennessee now, with three minutes and change left in the first half. Drive inside by Perry, drawing contact, and he'll go to the line. Well, it's tough going if you try to drive the ball in the paint yeah, in this game here. It's like running right into a weed eater. You're going to get some contact no matter what. Perry knew it was coming. So Jalen Perry, a 59% free throw shoot, a little hitch in the delivery, but it knocks it down. I guess. Quite a hitch, actually. And you do what works. Uh, he's a guy that's found his way to score all year. Comes in averaging 11, but he's been in double figures 19 times. So the free throw percentage not big, but it helps augment what are really solid numbers for the senior. Perry delivering a one-point lead for UAB, the fifth seed, but being tested here by the 12th seed, Middle Tennessee. Blue Raiders coming back from a nine-point first-half deficit. A lot of it has been the shooting in the first half of Donovan Sims, including a bank three-pointer from about 25 feet away. 
Sims on the curl, can't get it from Hawthorne. He'll hand it off to Antonio Green. Off the screen, you see he draws that double team, dishes it back to Hawthorne for a three, no, and game with the board for UAB. Quasar has been very good on the defensive glass, and they hustle it back down. They're not wasting much time getting into their offensive set. They'd like to run if that opportunity presents itself. Game with the dribble, and the weave with Levin. Over to Bryan, he draws a double team, kicks it left side, a three-pointer up, rattles out. As Perry couldn't find the range in Middle Tennessee, Able to get the rebound. They shoot here for the lead at the two-minute mark of the first half. Trying to upset the fifth seed, UAB Blazers. With 18 wins this year, but they're in a scrap here in the first half. In the corner, Green. Way back up top to Sims. Shot clock down to five. He's in some trouble again. To his left with two. A desperation shot off the back iron. Sims. And Lovin has the board. Sims is getting put in that position far too often. He starts the game with a couple of rhythm threes. His last couple of threes have been way late in the shot clock. Possession UAB with a one-point lead. Bryant inside off the glass. Nobody draws more contact. And a middle Tennessee foul. And who's going to go on Antonio Green? Well, Bryant, a gifted driver. And he's able to just... Uh, slice his way through the traffic and get the uh, reach in. So a rough first half for Green. His first foul. Zach Bryant back to the line. Nice look in motion. Two point lead for UAB. And now Pearson with some good minutes. Comes out of the game for UAB and Pearson Freshman from Chicago getting arrested. rest as Sullivan comes back in. Second free throw missed and uh, boarded again by Carl Gamble. He's had quite the first half for the Blue Raiders. Players have to talk. They almost had two guys tying one another up for that rebound. That's a, a travel if it goes on too long. Luckily, Middle Tennessee got away from that. Green on a double team. Now puts it on the floor. His drive is cut off. Back out three-pointer from the top. There is Kurt, uh, Carl Gamble again. Now 16 in the game, and uh, that gives Middle Tennessee a one-point lead with 103 left in the first half. The big thing about Gamble is he's going off script. He's an athletic post who normally is known for ducking in hard and getting the angles on the blocks. He's sprayed through a couple of really nice long-range shots, and that's forcing uh, the Blazers to rethink that assignment. He's got a nice three-point shot, and he has used it to Middle Tennessee's advantage. Nick McDevitt, we mentioned he's got his team playing better. He had a great run at his alma mater, UNC Asheville. Took him to uh, five 20 win seasons, or three 20 win seasons. One trip to the NCAA tournament, an NIT tournament, and CIT. Left his alma mater to come here and coach at uh, Middle Tennessee. Guy that's used to playing extended games in March. And yeah, tough to follow Kermit Davis and what he did, but I think Nick McDevitt. Given the time, is going to be every bit as good. Half-court trap put on by Middle Tennessee. And in the corner, a travel on Gay as he put it on the floor. And tried to make a move to the bucket, took the extra step. And the ball goes over to Middle Tennessee with 48 seconds left in the first half. The 12th seed with a one-point lead. It's March. And you talk about middle, for whatever reason, they've had the number of the Blazers winning six in a row in a series that the Blazers lead 10-9. Beat the UAB in Birmingham by one on February 2nd, uh, just days after beating them at home, 71-65. Another three-pointer launched by Gamble. This one won't go, and UAB will play for the final shot of the first half, they trail by one. Why not the heat check if you're Gamble? He'd been hitting them all half, but this does give Bryant a chance to assess the situation, and he's way up high watching that clock drift down. Sophomore from Hastings, Florida, with nine, starts to make his move off the screen to his left. With the dribble, 
with three, with two in the lane, hit the bottom of the rim, and that is it. Middle Tennessee defends it well, and they play well here in this first half. Absolutely, shot the ball better than uh, than you would think on a day where Green is not hitting, but as a team above 50% uh, from the floor, and then that defense at the end sends them into the locker room with a one-point lead. And as we uh, go to the half, let's go to John Little, who is standing by with the head coach of the Blue Raiders. Well, Coach, what helped your team kind of stem that early tide where UAB definitely had the early momentum? Yeah, you know, that's going to happen. Basketball is a game of runs. You just got to stay solid with your approach, not uh, get too carried away and play outside yourself on either side of the ball. What's helped Gamble be so effective in this first half? Well, you would, you would like to think that your seniors, your vets, are ready to play this time of year. He is one of our, our guys and uh, one of our seniors, so um, he's a good shooter, good player, and uh, doing some nice things here in the first 20 minutes. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Nick McDevitt very happy with his Blue Raiders, who have a one-point lead at the half. First round action, Conference USA Championships on ESPN+. Plus. George Dunham, Hank Dickinson from Frisco, Texas. First round of the Conference USA Championships. One point lead for Middle Tennessee. Let's get a word from John Little, who's with Robert Eason. Coach Eason, everything there for your guys. Only down one at the half. What was the message at the break? Uh, I think any conference tournament, NCAA tournament, is going to be a fight, and we got to continue to fight. You know, we know that they're a, they're a good opponent. We're a good, good team. It's going to be a tough battle right down to the end. We got to compete. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Good luck. Appreciate it. And there's some full court pressure being applied by UAB to start this second half. Middle Tennessee, the 12th seed, with a one point lead starting this second half at the Ford Center in Frisco, Texas. And again, a drive inside. This is an air ball thrown up as the green couldn't get it to go. And here's Bryant bringing it up for UAB. Soft, uh, very quiet first half for Antonio Green, leading scorer. This year for Middle Tennessee with 18 points per game, only one bucket for him in that first half. There's Jalen Perry picking up right where he left off in the first half. Hang. Stylish bucket. Perry almost came up with a steal, overcommitted a bit there. Antonio Green couldn't get that three to go. But we do get a whistle on UAB. That battle on the glass that results in the foul. That is going to be on Mukhtar Gay, his second. As Middle Tennessee will get it to Green in the corner. Couldn't find it again on the three. He was worried about his footwork as he caught that ball. He was looking down to make sure he was behind the three-point line, and it disrupted his rhythm, which he's not had much of. Here's Bryant with the screen and a move inside and a dunk with a right hand. A dunk with authority for Zach Bryant. I think they thought he was going left. He went right and right to the rim. Played bigger than six foot two on that big flush. Wow. Little flip up, left hook won't go for Gamble. And the UAB now with a three point lead. It's the first time Gamble looked like he was gambling. A bit nonchalant on that flip over the shoulder. Oh, the explosiveness of Bryant on that last bucket and a nice move on the baseline by Lewis Sullivan. Good start here in the second half for UAB. Eight in the game for Sullivan. Timeout called by Middle Tennessee. 39-34 is the Blazers' lead as they try to regain control here in the second half.
Youngsters having a good time here. Championship week on ESPN Plus. George Dunham, Hank Dickinson from Frisco, Texas. The Ford Center, headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys. UAB, the fifth seed. Maybe uh, knocked off just a little bit by that first half where they trailed the 12th seed, Middle Tennessee, by one. They've come out blazing here in the second half. Quick start. You had the huge dunk by Bryant. Sullivan then the next possession with a duck in and a quick timeout by Nick McDevitt, the Middle Tennessee coach, to stop the bleeding and try to reconnoiter a bit. Bryant pressuring Sims. That's something a little bit different here in the second half. And a little too aggressive by Jeremiah Bell. He'll pick up the foul. Let's go to John Little. George and Hank, you're exactly right. Nick McDevitt, McDevitt in that huddle was pretty calm with his team, but also talking about how lackadaisical that first minute and a half of the second half was. He's calling for more denials on the defensive side to be much more aggressive offensively. The Raiders trying to shoot into the five-point lead, and there he is again, Donovan Sims, another three-pointer, 17 in the game now. And Middle Tennessee back within two. Four of eight from downtown for Donovan Sims. Major hot hand. Bryant looking in. Thought about the three. Tries to go into Sullivan. Drawing contact, no foul, but he does get the shot to go. Lewis Sullivan now in double figures. Back to a four-point lead for UAB. Quickly to the rim. There's Green, and it sticks right between the glass and the rim. It's been that kind of night for Green. A wedgie to make things worse. When you're having wedgies, you're having a bad night. No, it's, that's never a good thing. Well, that'll send it back down the other way. Very, uh, very consistent and, and not surprising start by the Blazers. You heard John Little talking with Robert Isani. Very matter of fact, coming out of the gate to begin the second half. But his guys have been all business. Reggie Scurry out. James Hawthorne in for the Blue Raiders. Here's Bryant. Running things for UAB. Sullivan whips it over to Bell, and he knocks down a 15-footer. Jeremiah Bell, a good game here for UAB, and puts the Blazers up by six. That's a laser of a skip pass, the beneficiary, Bell. Johnson looking in off the Sims. Hawthorne now, guarded by Gay. The Sims back to Hawthorne on the baseline. He finds the range. James Hawthorne, that's his first basket of the game. And the first points for anybody off the bench for Middle Tennessee. They need a little bit of help from the reserves. Four-point lead for UAB. Just a little more than three minutes into it here in the second half. First round action. Conference USA Championships from Frisco, Texas. Sullivan inside, left-hander no. But he is so good at drawing contact, and he draws another Middle Tennessee foul, and I believe that is the third on James Hawthorne. Piercing his way in between Gamble and Hawthorne, and so a pair of seniors there with the defense. Sullivan, though, as we said at the beginning, he's a bully when he gets inside and skilled with that left hand. Boy, what do you do if you're uh, McDevitt here? You keep Hawthorne in with the three. Sullivan delivers on the first free throw. Well, you'd like to think that a senior knows how to play with that foul, but uh, three fouls with 16 and a half minutes left, that is a problem. He'll come out. Scurry comes back in. And the junior from Augusta, Scurry, has two fouls. As Sullivan makes both free throws. Six-point lead for UAB. They trailed by one at the half. Trying to beat Middle Tennessee and in their winning streak against the Blazers. They've won six in a row against UAB, including two wins this year. Scurry delivers the pick, and Green off of that screen. Wow, what a laser pass down low, and there is Scurry for the dunk. And Antonio Green's having a tough shooting night, but he's hanging in there with the passing game. That was a really nice dive. Well, and he's drawing that double team, which means somebody is open, so Green being the decoy, if you will, Collecting all of the attention, but then making the nice pass for an assist. Bryant given some space. Gives it up to Sullivan. He'll drive baseline. Off the window, yes, and the foul. The drive. And Lewis Sullivan, we talked about him, Hank, in the pregame show. He's tough in the paint. And he was there, too, at UAB. Looking tough here in the second half. Their lead over Middle Tennessee is six. It's championship week on ESPN+. Plus.
George Dunham, Hank Dickinson from the Ford Center in Frisco, Texas. First round action, Conference USA Championships. UAB the fifth seed and some trouble in that first half, but they have come out with some authority here and the first four minutes plus, and they now lead by six. And they are six of six from the floor to begin the second half, so make no mistake, the Blazers listened to that uh, halftime discussion from their head coach. They've come out and really fired on all cylinders and dominating points in the paint. Well, the guy at the free throw line is a big reason why. 12 points on five of seven shooting for Lewis Sullivan. To go along with four rebounds, a free throw here to try to complete the three-point play. The old-fashioned way, and he does it. 15 in, or 13 in the game now for Sullivan, who is coming off a big game. He went for 12 and eight against Old Dominion, and the Blazers win at the end of the regular season. And I think we, uh, do we have a contact issue here? Well, and uh, this play is under review. After that free throw, there was some uh, pushing down low, and the recipient of it was Zach Bryant. Yeah, it looked like he was crouched down looking for something, but he was crouched down in severe discomfort, and he's going to get some assistance walking off. And so once again, we had this in the first half here early in the second. A big review to see if maybe an elbow was thrown. Gary Dettelli, our lead official. We got Hardness, Brett Smith on the crew. And they'll take a look at it. Seven point lead for UAB. Blazers at 18 and 13 for the year. Finished 10 and 8 in Conference USA play. Again, 10 teams come into this tournament with winning records, four with 20 wins. And Old Dominion, the number one seed. But as we talked about it earlier, Hank, there are a number of teams who feel like they have a chance. Even the uh, the local team, North Texas, a 20-win team, got off to a great start. Then the injury bug hit. What do you think the temperament is of the Mean Green coming into this? Well, just uh, try to hit the reset button, a seven-game slide. And, you know, a 21-win season would be big time at the University of North Texas. But they've got to worry about just getting back in the win column. And that's a game that will come up after this one tonight. On the other court, lots of activity here. And you know, the early worry was, well, will the players be bothered by the noise coming from the other courts? Players will tell you, if you played any basketball at all growing up, you played plenty of AAU tournaments where there might be eight games going on yeah. at once. It doesn't bother them. And uh, they have the heavy curtain behind the basket. No flagrant. And we're back underway. Middle Tennessee trying to shoot into a seven-point UAB lead. Full court press and a trap in the back, but they handled it very well. And the Blazers have been more aggressive defensively here in the second half. Here's Sims finding Green. He's had a tough shooting night. Leading score for Middle Tennessee trying to get cranked up here in the second half. Entry pass down low. Little flip up. No good by Gamble. Foul though. Does go. Little Carl Malone-esque right there. He pads his staff with the, uh, the rebound. But how many moves did he have along the right block? First time it didn't go, but he gets his own stick back. Campbell now with the 16 in the game. Bryant and Bell playing catch, making the trap move a little bit for Middle Tennessee. Shot clock is down to eight as Bryant looks in. Given a little bit of room, it'll try the three-pointer, and it's too hard. Knocked around, there's Sullivan again, but he lost the handle and lost it out of bounds. There's some good work here by Carl Gamble a moment ago. Hey, he comes in averaging six rebounds a game. Watch him go to work here. A plethora of moves, and he's the guy that stays after it. UAB fell asleep on that vying for the Karam opportunity. UAB up five. Middle Tennessee with the ball. Green back to Gamble. Felt it, couldn't get it to go. And ripped down by Jalen Perry. Perry off the Sullivan screen will try a three-pointer off the rim. There's Hawthorne with the board playing with three fouls, but able to clean the glass there for the Blue Raiders. Here is Gamble down low on a double team. He thought he had drawn contact and a foul and just tried to, uh, to notch it up towards the bucket. He didn't get the whistle, though. Great hands on the catch, but you're right. He was hoping with that violent move he was going to get the official's attention. Never happened. Well, but in the high post off the Perry. Green is on him. Bell now over to Bryant. 
who has nine off the bench did not start but he shows that he can shoot the three we've seen him dunk tonight and he is coming alive now with 12 points in the game back to an eight point lead for uab they had a nine point lead in the first half sims with a little bobble but he regathered it in time green a three short and he still can't find the range on the long range shot and he shoots a lot of them at 107 entering tonight he's had a Tough time uh, getting the drop this evening. Brian, I think, wanted to trigger the tray, but he heard his coach saying, no, let's slow it out and let's run the offense. So they do just that. Bell into the paint, blocked out of there by Hawthorne, and it skips out to Bryant. Now with five on the shot clock. Bryant with the crossover, and the jumper from 18 is good. What a pretty dribble behind the back as he needed to get some separation and then the fluid motion on that shot. Sophomore from Hastings, Florida. Zach Bryant, terrific player. Biggest lead of the game for UAB. They force another turnover, and the Blazers on the run. Sullivan down the lane, and his uh, little underhand shot blocked. And another foul inside on Middle Tennessee, and that is on Hawthorne. That is his fourth. Here's a look at Bryant starting to get heated up from downtown, working on Sims, step back and swish. And then, once again, Bryant, you see, his handiwork with the ball and able to get smooth yeah, there. He's it? able to, to get the separation he needs to get a good look at it and the ability to knock down those shots. Sullivan back at the line. He has been a workhorse for UAB this evening. Well, sometimes you talk about not enough big men in the college ranks, but Sullivan fits the bill. He uh, he's a guy anybody would take as their big. See his numbers tonight. Very good. Left-hander delivers again. And Hawthorne out of the game with those four fouls for Middle Tennessee. Reggie Scurry in his spot. And they're going to look at Maktar Gay checking back in. Yeah, Sullivan had worked up quite a lather going into those free throws. And as Green gets across the timeline, Nick McDevitt wants to talk to his charges one more time. He can feel this one slipping. Timeout, Blue Raiders, UAB leading by 12. And starting to look like the fifth seed here. Conference USA Championships. Robert Eason, his third year as the head coach, already with more than 50 wins, 55 of them. Picked up win number 50 just up the road in Denton in uh, late January. And he has had great success, was an assistant coach at Virginia Tech under Seth Greenberg, and spent six years at Maryland under Gary Williams. Yeah, that's two great names. and. Then Jared Haas allowed him to be a part of the program when UAB really turned it up a notch. And of course, UAB's got such great tradition. Dean Bartow putting that program literally on the map. He started it. And uh, coming from UCLA, Bartow replacing the legendary John Wooden. That didn't work out as well, but what he did at UAB worked out perfectly. Middle Tennessee trying to hang in there. Now down by 12 with 12.30 left. Here in the game, first round action, Conference USA Championships. Johnson the Sims. Up high to Scurry. Now here's Green trying to find something. Can't get the roll off the rim. Loose ball chased down by UAB's Tyreek Scott Grayson. Feel it just uh, slipping away from Middle Tennessee here. They need to stop and they need to Sims or someone to heat up from the outside again. Senior McCoy back in. He got the start, but getting some crucial minutes here in the second half is, yes, UAB would like to pull away. Green with a reach in on Scott Grayson. And second foul of the game on the junior from Tupelo, Mississippi. That brings us to a timeout. 11.56 left. First round action, Conference USA Championships. It's championship week here on ESPN+. Plus.
First round action, Conference USA Championships here in Frisco, Texas. UAB starting to stretch it out. George Dunham along with Hank Dickinson. Let's go to John Little. You guys mentioned Robert Eason and his great success over these three seasons at UAB, but the one thing he has not done is beat his travel partner, Middle Tennessee, 0 and 6 against Middle over the three years. Is the seventh time a charm? That's what we're about to find out with a 12 point lead. Familiarity breeds contempt, and sometimes it turns into a win. Two teams played uh, really tight games this year, both of them won by Middle Tennessee. UAB trying to advance here as the fifth seed. And now with the ball and a 12-point lead. So we wind down under 12 minutes here in the first round of the Conference USA Championships. Blazers deliver it offensively. They're not uh, in a hurry. They like watching some of that time leak off. And they're shooting 73%, so they're getting good shots. Jalen Perry over on the right side. Three-pointer missed by Scott Grayson. Except Thought he for that some uh, contract, <laughs> but uh, didn't go. There's where the good shots go away right there. <laughs> that one was not uh, why they had gotten to 73% shooting. Jace Johnson with the handle for Middle Tennessee. Trying to get back into it. Gamble's had a big night. Gives it up to Sims. He's also shot the ball well. Here's Gamble inside. Lost the ball. Had it stripped out of his hands by Scott Grayson. And he'll take it the length of the way. Runner. No. And a rebound. Comes down to Antonio Green, or uh, make it a gamble for Middle Tennessee. Little spin dribble by Sims, giving himself some separation, and he knocks it down. Tough shot, 16 in the game now for Donovan Sims. Sims has hit some pretty shots. He's hit some kind of strange shots, but he has hit shots all night. McCoy over the right side to Scott Grayson. The high post now to Gay. 10:37 left in the game. 55-45. UAB and there he is down low Scott Grayson with a tough bucket off the glass now five off the bench and that is where UAB is really they're, they're deeper Hank well they're deeper but you also have Bryant coming off the bench so his 14 bench points a little bit misleading but yes they're getting more contributions from reserves than Middle Tennessee and we understand we have a final next door La Tech with a one point win over Florida Atlantic. They advance to take on the number one seed tomorrow night here in Frisco, Old Dominion. A missed free throw for Florida Atlantic. The difference in that one. Mm. Tough when it comes down to that, and you have to live with that throughout the offseason. And here it's a 12 point game, one point game at the half, as Middle Tennessee had. The intermission lead, but UAB has really extended their defense here in the second half, and that has helped them offensively. And Bryant should be refueled and rested. He had extended minutes on the bench, but he's back. Drive inside, Scott Grayson. A graceful move. Can't get the bucket, but he does draw a contact and will go to the line. Coming along that baseline, tries to scoop it up at the end, but here you see all the traffic he has to go through just to get to that point. Hawthorne uh, had a tough it one for yeah. James Hawthorne had to come back in playing with those four fouls and the senior from Princess Mississippi has just fouled out tough loss and uh, that's a, a big frame who's been active on the glass for Middle Tennessee and as you mentioned Hank they're not just real deep no but the scouting report on Hawthorne reads aggressive on every touch and sometimes that aggression can put you in some Tough situations with fouls, and that's what happened to him here tonight. He just hopes it's not the last time he has to check out of a college game. Mm. Eric Scott Grayson makes his first. One more to try to give UAB their biggest lead of the game, and he does. 59-45 UAB. We're under 10 minutes to play here in this first-round matchup. The winner gets UTSA. Tomorrow at 6.30 here at the Ford Center in Frisco. Sims on the curl with a bounce over on the left side to Farquhar. And now down low, a shot from the block won't go for Johnson. And UAB really starting to take control of this game. And they've got to feel so good about what they've done to Antonio Green. One of 11 shooting. Bryant. Thought he was fouled. The uh, ball didn't hit anything. Here's Green driving the other way. Had it knocked out of his hands, and he was the last one to touch it.
turnover I, on Middle Tennessee. He's just had a frustrating night. Capital F in that one of 11 shooting, one of eight from downtown, and there he finally gets a fast break opportunity. Maybe get some points in transition, and he loses the ball on his way to the rack. Made the three late first half. We thought maybe he's coming on here. He looks tired. Boy, they've, they've really gone at him and guarded him well. Got Grayson. Loses the dribble, picks it back up, hands it off the bell. Shot clock down to six. Bryant from the right corner, no. And we get a whistle underneath. That's going to be a push on UAB. Yeah. That's going to be on... Uh, that's Mactar Gay, and that's his third. Big rangy player, and sometimes with that kind of wingspan, if you're built like a praying mantis, like Gay is, sometimes those arms will get you in trouble. And as he battled down low, he picks it up and heads to the bench. But if you're the Blazers, now you got a fresh Lewis Sullivan back in the lineup, and boy, has he been a big, big part mm. of their effort today. Yeah, especially in this second half. 15 in the game for Sullivan. Middle Tennessee down by 14. They turn it over again. And the lead pass out to Scott Grayson. He gets hacked from behind. Frustration foul on Antonio Green. That's his third. So the foul's starting to pile up on a night where Green has just uh, not been himself, but transferred from the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, newcomer of the year. Here you see that transition opportunity. And I'll tell you, an upside for the Blazers, the play of this young guy, Scott Grayson. Sophomore off the bench with seven points here and been part of the second half push here for UAB. And you can say UAB has been doing it defensively all year long. They're 15 and two and holding opponents under 70. They're going to do that again tonight. Boy, sure be a so. 16 and two. Unless Middle Tennessee can just go uh, unhinged here in the last eight minutes. Well, defense is going to keep you in games all the time. Shots are going to help you win ball games, but that old mantra of defense winning championships, this time of year it's a big thing. And there's finally Green finding a lane, and that's a nice finish for a guy that's had an otherwise really difficult night. Explosive move to the basket for Antonio Green. Only with five points tonight, they've done a really good job defensively on him. He's the leading scorer for this Middle Tennessee team, 18 a game, but not tonight. Sullivan down on the baseline with a spin at it stripped out of his hands and the Middle Tennessee forces the turnover. There's good defense there by Farquhar to knock it loose. Now Green to the bucket. Had it knocked out. He's knocked down. No foul. But the ball's out of bounds and that'll bring us to a timeout. 7.46 left. 13-point lead for UAB here in the first round. Conference USA Championships on ESPN+. Plus. George Dunham, Hank Dickinson from the Ford Center in Frisco, Texas, headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys. The fifth seed, UAB, trailed at one, uh, trailed by one at halftime. In the second half, though, they've had some balanced scoring to bring them back. 
Well, it's a team that's been predicated on that balance and a lot of double figure scores. But to me, Sullivan, the guy that we talked about at the onset, has been the big difference maker. The 15 points, excellent five of seven shooting, and then he's also crashing the glass. But Perry, Bryant, can't argue with their ability to spread the wealth. This now makes 28 out of 32 games that UAB has had at least three players in double figures. Sims can't get the three pointer to go. Rebounded though by uh, Carl Gamble's had a big night on the glass. He couldn't get that shot. And UAB down with it again, leading by 13. Well, UAB right now, their task is clear. Keep running your offense and take some time doing it if you can just to bleed that clock. Brian off the Sullivan screen. A little pick and roll. Couldn't find Sullivan though. He'll reverse it back on the left side. And here's Lovett inside. Right hander up, no good. And a scramble for the rebound. Little Tennessee coming out with it. Junior Farquhar with it into the front court. Off the Sims to Gamble. But that big first half for the Blue Raiders. Here's a nice drive by Green, but he couldn't get the little scoop to go. They do get a second crack at it now. Sims eyed that three, then thought better of it. Where Green was really grousing after that miss. It was such a nice move, it wouldn't go. And just he went over to the left wing and muttered to himself, this has not been my day. And that entry pass a little too hard for Johnson to handle. And another turnover on Middle Tennessee at the 632 mark. They don't need that down 13. UAB trying to stretch it out here. A lot of huffing and puffing going on from the likes of Tavin Lovin and that whole crew. 11th turnover of the game yeah, on Middle Tennessee. Tennessee. An equipment problem over there. Well, you talked about trying to find a. Well, that is a contact. Yeah, a contact. Issue, I think that's what's going on this time. They seem to find those things more often than not, which is amazing to me. At a big basketball court. And somehow they always seem to chase it down, throw some water on it, put it right back in. I never could do contacts. Could you? No, I, I don't like sticking do my finger that? in my eye. I just don't think it's a no. good idea. Although, if you look at the cheater glasses I wear now, you might say, yeah, go ahead and get some contacts. No, they look good on you. Well, they're necessary. I'll guarantee you that. Yeah, it happens. You and I started doing this together about 25 years ago. Yeah. Our eyesight was a lot better. Well, it's been fun tonight. It's been yeah, good no, to be it's back. It's been a lot of fun. And Appreciate the conference asking us and uh, look forward to getting over to the other court here in about six and a half minutes and seeing what North Texas can get done in their matchup. North Texas and FIU on the court. They're just behind this one about to start here in just a few minutes. La Tech, a one-point winner over Florida Atlantic just moments ago. Here UAB's up by 13. Drive inside by Perry. Draws another middle Tennessee foul. Let's take a look at that drive. Once again, there's been a lot of contact tonight. You've got to be ready if you're going to take it inside the lane always to get a little bit bumped. A little hesitation, and they're waiting for it. And there is the unusual delivery by Jalen Perry. He's had a good game tonight with 14. He has almost just a little pause. I bet that's tough not to step in the lane when you're seeing that as an opponent trying to guess when the release will happen. Ooh, ooh, almost played well, with on the rim there. Rattled in there by Gamble. And uh, it's clean. The rebound goes to Middle Tennessee. They trail by 13. Under six minutes. Whistle underneath. And raising the hand of Zach Bryant. That'll be his first foul of the game. Middle Tennessee maintains possession. They need a basket here desperately to try to stay in it, keep their late season mojo going. Yeah, if you can get this under 10 before that last media timeout, you feel like you've got a chance with a three point shot. You've always got a chance. UAB aggressive in that 2 3 zone, pressuring a lot of the passes around the perimeter and inside as Gay got a piece of that injury pass, but it's picked right back up by Farquhar. And he scores his first basket. Gay did his job. Unfortunately, Bryant didn't see that ball in time to gobble it up for the Blazers. And Middle Tennessee's going to step up the defense way up high here with some traps. Bryant with the handle looks at a double team down on the baseline to Gay. He's double teamed and fouled. 
has been pretty physical down low for both teams here this evening. A lot of whistles. And that will put Mactar Gay to the line, sophomore from uh, the Senegal. Good free throw shooter for a 6'10 guy. Well, not normally the book, but he's at 75% despite that long wingspan that he has to negotiate at the free throw line. The delivery is an air ball. And uh, we will hear from the Middle Tennessee pet band on that one just as we talk him up. Yeah, that's not the negotiation we were talking about. 60-49 UAB. Winding down near five minutes left here in this first round game. Conference USA Championship. Sims trying to keep Middle Tennessee alive. Now 19 in the game with that three-pointer. Five triples on the evening for Donovan Sims, the talented sophomore out of Murfreesboro. He'll be back to help continue to rebuild. Bryant's pass is too high for Mactar Gay. It's out of bounds. Turnover on UAB. Look at the uh, three-pointer here for Donovan Sims. Well, he catches it with plenty of space between himself and the three-point line. But the heat check working tonight for Sims. And, you know, he's a guy you can't allow to get the rhythm threes, and that's what's happened to him in both halves. He's found a way to get it in a great rhythm, and that's when shooters can really hurt you. Grew up in Murfreesboro, and now a sophomore. A big shot delivered there for the Blue Raiders. Down by eight, 458 left. Blue Raiders, the 12th seed. They've won six of their last 10 games, though. They've played much better for first-year head coach Nick McDevitt here late in the season. Well, they returned just 15% of the total minutes played the previous year. And again, you start over with a new coach, a new philosophy. Giddy Potts gets done after 20 years of being a Blue Raider or what it seemed like. They had a lot of familiar faces during that great run for Kermit Davis. And uh, so McDevitt had his work cut out and then inherits a non-conference schedule that was easily the toughest in the Conference USA ranks. And that's probably done them uh, some good as conference play has uh, carried on here to March. Hanging in here against the fifth seed. Uh, they lost the handle. There's uh, another tough one for Antonio Green as uh, flying in goes uh, Mactar Gay. And he just lost the ball himself and turned it over right back to the Blue Raiders. A little bit of sloppiness here down the stretch. And for UAB, eight points, you can't be comfortable sitting on eight points. No. Middle Tennessee is just one three ball away from being right back in this game. And a game where Antonio Green has just five points. What if he heats up? The Blue Raiders still with some hope in this one. 430 mark, they're down 60 to 52. Sims tries it again and knocks it down. Well, he may be the guy that you just let carry you back because now it's a five-point game and McDevitt. Clapping the hands, encouraging his team. He's never pushed panic in this game. The Blue Raiders, the 12th seed, will not go away. Back within five. Bryant and Scott Grayson playing catch up top. Now Scott Grayson trying to penetrate Kant. Down low to Sullivan. Blocked from behind by Scurry. And the Blue Raiders with hope at the four-minute mark. Well, you don't always get away with that block from behind because always there's some contact. And normally the block from behind results in a whistle. Great job by Reggie Scurry. Sims off the screen, can't get away. Back on the right side, Johnson back to Sims. Long range three, way short. And there's a scramble for it. Scott Grayson with some scrappy minutes here for UAB. Able to dig that one out. Now Sullivan left in the lane. Leaves it, three-pointer attempt up and no good by Perry. And Middle Tennessee running the other way. No numbers. To help out Antonio Green, and he'll hold it up. Scott Grayson just missed time to jump coming in from the right. He almost had a powerful offensive rebound. Now we got a foul on a screen. Illegal screen against the Blue Raiders. And a timeout with 3.23 left in the game. UAB up five. Blue Raiders trying to hang in there. First round action, Conference USA Championships.
UAB pet band trying to bring them through. Getting tense here. First round action Conference USA Championships. George Dunham along with Hank Dickinson from the Ford Center. Let's go to John Little. Middle Tennessee only 2 and 15 away from Murfreesboro this season. So when they get down by double digits in the second half, you might think they'd fold. But even the bench believed when they were down by 12 up and on their feet. James Hawthorne, who fouled out earlier this half, leading the way. Middle Tennessee, they've got some work to do. But I can tell you the bench believes. 2 and 11 on the road this year, Middle Tennessee. And uh, yeah, John mentioned 0 and 4 on a neutral site. But they're hanging in here tonight as the 12th seed against the 5th seed, UAB. 60 to 55 as we near the three minute mark. Sullivan with 10 on the shot clock. Penetrating, has it stripped by Sims. And the Blue Raiders come up with another big defensive play. Here's Johnson, runner, no, but he does draw a foul. He's able to take it right to Jeremiah Bell. Back at the other end, Sullivan, normally kind of a bully on the block, he tried to be finesse and didn't get away with it, so it sends it back down the floor, and free throws and tantamount importance now because you've got to chip away with the clock stopped. Nifty play defensively by Donovan Sims. Jace Johnson with free throws. And he knocks down the first to make it a four-point game with 2.54 left. Right behind Scurry with a number of free throw attempts on the year, but again, not automatic. And he shows it there. Couldn't quite get it to go. Remains a four point deficit for Middle Tennessee. UAB's had a tough time scoring it here in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, after that really big start, shooting above 70%, the defense has tightened up on it. Bryant holding, now puts it on the floor, faces a double team. Cross court over the bell. And he'll try a three from the top. Yes. Big one delivered by Jeremiah Bell. His second three, but George, they were able to get a lot of clock to evaporate and still cash in. So that's exactly what UAB wants. That's the recipe to get this in the victory garage. Seven point lead for UAB. Sims inside. Flip with the left. No. Follow, though. Yes, for Carl Gamble, who's had a huge night for Middle Tennessee. Well, he creates rebound area. He gets in there and he knows where he's supposed to dominate. And Gamble has been way above what he normally does. Comes in a seven point per game, six rebound score. Now with 18 in the game, gay down low, able to be really patient with it. Wait for the defense to uh, collapse and then flips it in. You put UAB back up by seven. Blazers is using both of their twin towers down the stretch. Antonio Green, no from the top, batted around. Bell with it for UAB. And the Blue Raiders running out of time. 129 left. Seven point lead for the Blazers. Just one timeout left for Nick McDevitt. And so he's, he's going to use it. He knows it may have to come after a stop here. There's Bryant to the cup. Lefty, no. Batted around, Ryan picks it up, kicks it out to Sullivan, and UAB will uh, have to scamper again with three on the shot clock. Bell inside, drawing contact, and a middle Tennessee foul. Well, I tell you, balls were going every which way but loose, and the Blazers out hustling themselves to keep the possession alive, and then really got bailed out on that drive on a reach in, and it's like some cramping going on down along the baseline as they're attending to Zach Bryant. But here you go, Bell sees the shot clock winding, comes inside and gets the reach in. And that'll get him to the line with 105 to play, 65-58. Bryant may have to come out. Now yeah, he's going to have to probably go and get uh, some isotonics in him. Cramping here, and that's always a sign of overexertion. He's got to keep the fluids in. Jeremiah Bell. 65% free throw shooter makes his first. Hit a big three a moment ago and a big free throw there. And a timeout with 105 left. Time is running out for Middle Tennessee on their season. UAB with some big plans this week. This is a team to keep an eye on it. Well, it's a team that, like we said at the onset, both of these programs have championship pedigree. And for the Blazers, they're trying to get back to where they were at the height of the Jared Haas era, where he had this team really going in the right direction. Of course, they hosted the tournament in Birmingham for a few years when UAB was the preeminent team in Conference USA. And so they're, they know they're not too far off that. Meanwhile, we continue to look at them stretching out the 
very formidable player in Zach Bryant. He's he's getting the full core treatment here, trying to get loose with a minute five left. Well, and one thing that will play a factor for UAB, they were not a top four team, so you have to play the extra game. Mm -hmm. And that could become a factor later in the week, but that's a, that's a problem for another night. Winner faces a very good UTSA team. Steve Henson was the coach of the year a year ago. Done another good job in San Antonio this year. Bell with the delivery. And a 67-58 lead for UAB. About to break a string of six straight losses to Middle Tennessee and advance to the quarterfinals of the Conference USA Championships. Green couldn't get it to go again from three land. Now Sims will try it from deep. And he can't get it. And it's loose on the floor and picked up again by UAB. They seem to be getting into a lot of the loose balls here in the second half. Rebound by committee, and here they come with some showtime. And a little lob down to Ooh. Sullivan. Nice find there by Scott Grayson. Now, a big thing was to avoid the trap in backward and get the ball across the timeline, which they did. 69-58 UAB splashed down from the corner for Johnson. And he's hanging in there down eight. Only 24 seconds left. They'll need some help. And they'll need some UAB turnovers. Johnson, the freshman from Buffalo, known more for getting to the foul line, being a physical straight line driver. But he knows this late in the game, he's going to have to spring for three. And he's able to connect. The winner of the... North Texas FIU game, which is just getting under, about to get underway on uh, court A here at the Ford Center. They will get the second seed, Western Kentucky. Winner of Marshall and Rice, the team that will play after this game, will get the third seed, Southern Miss. Earlier, La Tech squeaked by Florida Atlantic by one, 57-56. They'll get the top seed, Old Dominion, tomorrow at 6 o'clock here at the Ford Center. Yeah, just getting started. Gonna be a lot of great finishes, and uh, you see some of the Marshall faithful there. They've traveled all the way in from Huntington, West Virginia. They've got that team that plays like an NBA squad under Dan D'Antoni. A lot of fun to watch the herd. They hadn't gone to the NCAA tournament since the 70s until last year. They not only got there, they pulled an upset. So that's a program to continue to watch as long as you've got John Elmore out there gunning in shots you've got a chance to win this whole thing a lot of teams feel like they've got a crack here conference usa championship it's uh, pretty wide open old dominion's the team to beat as the top seed uab to inbound sullivan running the baseline finding bryant double team fouled and they'll hope for miss free throws middle tennessee will that's on the gamble his fourth stops the clock with 22 left The late free throws that can just put the nail in the coffin. And Brian certainly been a big reason why UAB has a great opportunity to march on. Zach Bryant coming off the bench tonight, 14 points. You see his numbers from the field. A solid free throw shooter. Backs down the first. Well, for those who are tuning in to this broadcast, from across the country. This is not the first game Hank and I have done together. We did, uh, by my estimation, over 600 games together, I think, over 20 years, somewhere in there. A lot of football, a lot of basketball, a lot of fun. It's been great working with you Yeah, again. it's been fun. We're done with the Mean Green Radio Network. Hank still uh, part of the athletic department and uh, working with Dave Barnett. And uh, you'll call the North Texas FIU game. I think Green's had a tough time with the Golden Panthers this year as Green draws a foul while driving in. Tough night for this Green, Antonio Green, but he'll be back next year. You're coming off a Newcomer of the Year accolade. He's set for a big senior season. Still a foul to give for UAB, and that forces an inbound, and Green had it stripped out of his hands. And it has been uh, beyond a frustrating night for the newcomer of the year in Conference USA as UAB will dribble off the time. Finishing touches put on it by Mactar Gay, and that'll do it for this round matchup.
this first round matchup conference usa championships in frisco uab advances 70 to 61 a game where the blazers trailed by one at the half but boy they took a stranglehold of this game in the second half and if you're the blazers the mantra now is rest and repeat they know they've got it in them and uh, tomorrow they'll have quite a conflict with UTSA. Anytime you're taking on uh, that team, you're talking about two guys, Gavon Jackson and Keaton Wallace. But today, the Blazers used a lot of different guys to get it done against Middle Tennessee. So we've had two teams advance here from the first round to the quarterfinals. Louisiana Tech defeats Florida Atlantic 57 to 56. And here a win for UAB over Middle Tennessee as the Blazers advance to the quarterfinals to meet the Roadrunners of UTSA tomorrow night here at the Ford Center in Frisco. It's the headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys, but this week it's all about hoops. Conference USA championships on championship week here on ESPN+. Plus. For Hank Dickinson, I'm George Dunham. Thanks for being with us. A nine-point win for UAB.